Hello everyone, I'm your co-host Rick. I got Man Bun David to my right and Grinch behind the camera. And welcome to the first ever Dub CF Reviews. I think that's what we're going to call it. Oh, that was pretty cool. It has a nice little ring to it, right? Yeah, it does clean, have a nice ring to it. So this series is dedicated to discussing, reviewing, and potentially shitting on various entertainment Movies. Movies. It's gonna be well. It's gonna be films, uh, TV shows, yes. video games, etc. Maybe YouTube channels. We might take some people down. Some I don't reaction. know. Plays. Maybe that some plays here and there. Probably not. Plays. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. Maybe yeah. that'll just be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, I don't. I don't know about the capacity now, but you can try to go. Uh, yeah, it's rough. That Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really give Broadway reviews right now. All right. Um, so. We decided to start strong, and we're going to review Christopher Nolan's latest project, Tenet. Um, we're going to be talking about specifics in the movie, so if you haven't seen it and you don't want it ruined, go ahead and click off now. Um, but if you still want to be mildly entertained, um, we do have our West Coast Flagrancy podcast that you can go watch. Yeah, and I recommend it because it's pretty good. It's aces. Aces. It's A1 is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's A1 is what it is. Yeah, it's A1. Yeah, no, steak but, sauce, bro. Oh, shit. Too steak much sauce, drip. Bro. No, yeah, so, but uh, go ahead, Grinch. And yeah, let's get into us, it. Yeah, fill us in on what this movie is about. You've, you've, um, well, the storyline is um, in a twilight world of international espionage and unnamed CIA operative known as the protagonist is recruited by a mysterious organization called Tenant to participate in a global assignment that unfolds beyond real time. The mission prevent Andre Sator, a renegade Russian oligarch with precognition abilities from start. Precognition start abilities. That's what it says, baby. From that starting World War Three, the protagonist will soon master the art of time inversion as a way of countering the threat that is to come. Okay, see that did not sound at all like the movie we saw. Mm -mm. Right, we nope. We were watching. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that is the movie we saw. <laughs> Tenant is good, in you know my what, opinion. I what thought I, it was good. I don't mean to cut you up, but what I just noticed because you said that yeah. was I, there wasn't a lot of reference to like a World War Three. There was a few, but they didn't really talk about it like as often as like because when they the, started in the beginning, they yeah. mentioned it. Yeah, and then that was and then that was kind of like it, and then yeah. it was kind of like sort yeah. of dwindled. Right. The idea is that. Um, the power to control time and to be able to f have foresight, like you can eventually just do whatever you want. Like you'd be able to predict anything. Now, um, it really turned more into him saving her. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So this is spoiler, it stopped. Uh, yeah. It's like it stopped being about like okay. preventing World War Three, and it stopped being about like uh, even about the the oligarch. I mean, it had some to do with him, but it was more about saving yeah. this broad that, like doesn't really tie into the story that well yeah and so to start from the beginning like his story rather sorry well, right. who's, who's in the movie well so that i don't get any got, names wrong yeah right, right right all right well for that we have um robert pattinson mm -hmm. who's actually the co well he's a he's a star but he's a co-star to john david washington who's the son of denzel washington yes yes not to say that he's not a talented actor <laughs> I like let me I want to make that clear though. No, I no, like no, him. No, no, no. I like John David Washington just in this particular film wasn't he wasn't the strongest if I'm being honest. That's interesting because I've I've heard of John David Washington um through that show Ballers with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That's where I know him from. That's right. I didn't even know that that was him. That exactly. Yeah. I didn't know that was him either. Like cuz he plays He was really good in Ballers. Right, because it's a TV show, mm -hmm. and like you don't really have to. Not fight. because it's a TV show, you jerk. No, well, it's a cable HBO show, right? It's like that's not cable though. It's not cable. It's not HBO is not cable. No, it's I don't know. Okay. That's that top tier fucking. What is that? Like premium? Yeah. Premium television. Premium, yeah. Yeah, because HBO does have premium television. So that's where I first heard of J John David Washington, and then I was I had no idea that was his son until like I don't know maybe a couple months ago that I uh, actually looked into it because I was kind of like, oh. He's coming out in Tenet. Like, I didn't think he was a very good actor. Maybe it's just his face or his beard or something. I have nothing against him because his pops is, you know, a legend in acting. But for me, I'm just like, oh, you. I don't know if you have what your father had. But um, anyways. Well, you got to give him time. You know, he's still young. I mean, he's, he's doing big boss, 
big blockbuster films, but that doesn't necessarily make you like a strong, you know, leading man. True. true. Yeah. No, and he's getting work. So I if guess anybody good. doesn't um, know what else he may have been in besides Ballers, because I myself hadn't, you know, really mm-hmm. realized it until we thought really clearly about it. He was also, I mean, he was in Malcolm X, but like that was his remember, father yeah. was like leading. So he played a little kid, but he was also in uh, Black Klansman. Which I haven't seen, but I wanted to. I feel like it wasn't in theaters that long, but I with, could be um, wrong. With uh, Driver? Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah. Right, yeah. I haven't seen it either. We should watch that one. Definitely, yeah. Um, same thing with, uh, have you seen, I oh, know it's a different movie, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, do you, do you want to tell us how it starts, Rick? Like, um, if you remember. I don't remember. That's the, that's <laughs> the crazy part about this movie. It's so, so confusing. I know, right? Because it, it te- this movie technically is like a loop. By the end of it, you've realized that everything, all the events that happened in the beginning of the movie have already happened because he, so the movie opens up with John David Washington and his uh, special ops team uh, saving or preventing a terrorist attack at an opera house, at a Russian opera house. And as the operation goes on, you see clearly that his special ops team is on another mission Right. Besides the one that the police are on or the anti-terrorist group is on. They move in and you see hints of what they bring up later in the movie where there are these special agents, right, who work for the tenant Mm -hmm. organization that are also there. But at this point in the movie, we don't know that they are working for tenant or that they're able to travel back in time. Right. In some sense. Right. Because that's kind of what they're doing. Um, Do you remember what happens after the opera house like right after right he gets captured yeah he gets captured Mm -hmm. it looks like he's in a you know he's getting tortured right that's apparent that his whole team was compromised yeah um and then i mean he ends up killing himself taking he attempts to right he attempts to well no no because they find it on him they find his pill yes so it was it was him and one of his partners uh, his partners that was there and his partner had the extra you know, one. had the had his pill and just you know he it was tipped himself over so that yeah, he can. This put is a very interesting scene for me. Like, not to dwell on it too much, but I'm like, how do you make something like that look realistic? Because he's like tied up and he lunges out of his chair to try and eat it right out of his hand. Yeah. I was like, yeah, in a desperate situation, oh, yeah. you know, you. I would have missed that. You would have missed that. <laughs> I would have <laughs> like, completely missed that. I would have been like, fuck, because they don't show the part where he puts it in his mouth. He's already <laughs> turning over with it in his yeah. mouth and shit. So I would have been like, can I try that again? Yeah. Because um, I would not have gotten yeah, So what happens that. after that? He eats it and it was a fake out, right? Right, yeah, because it was like, you know, you see him going out of consciousness. So you assume that he, yeah. he died. Right. You assume he died and he wakes up on a boat, right? Like many of us do. Um, he, <laughs> they t- the, Whoever is his handler tells him oh we reconstructed your face i'm thinking all oh, they fucking 3d printed his ass out or something i don't know that's what i thought oh yeah because they beat the shit out they of him. beat the shit out of him mm-hmm. right yeah yeah they, they i it looked like they were taking teeth out they, yeah, yeah they fucking they whipped yeah. the were pulling shit out of him. him yeah it's amazing that they yeah. were able to like be like oh yeah he's still alive because yeah because yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it was the, they were at the train yard yes so that his buddy they killed his was his partner yeah, or his, his friend or whatever team, yeah. so he was laying there on the floor yeah and then the Ru- i think it was the other russian dude just came and just started fucking wailing on him like yeah. there's no way anybody's gonna survive this yeah, yeah yet yeah. somehow he was able to dive and yeah. eat the pill yeah and uh, survive just to die mm. yeah he survived just to die or technically he's dead he's off the books dead and well, he no, gets recruited. The, the pill that he takes uh-huh. is like the ones from sort of like the Cold War era where... It's like cyanide, isn't it? it hides, yeah, like it, you hide it in your tooth. Mm-hmm. Or like and they, would, they take a tooth it, out. Yeah, like you crack it. it. Your, yeah. yeah. And then it, it puts you into this like super deep sleep that like to any passerby you'd seem dead. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. So apparently it was a recruitment process. Like if you die on the field of battle or you, get, or you don't give yourself up, you qualify for this program that is off the books that doesn't exist yet but is from the future called tenant tenant is the name of the organization that is trying to prevent what in the movie they refer to as world war three which is why i assume they do that because what's like a bigger calamity right than uh, world war three yeah right because we know and it's a scary thing to think about right because world war three we don't know where um we might be when it comes to like nuclear powers. I mean, imagine the devastation like World War Two had. Imagine a World War Three now with the technology right. and the weaponry we have uh, now. Yeah, it would be, be it would insane. be on an extreme scale, right? Because, anyways, so 
that's their mission, basically. Tenant's mission is to prevent World War III, to keep it simple, because it gets really convoluted. Which is crazy, because that's all that you really... That's as much as you get about that, about um, them trying to prevent mm -hmm. World War III. Because right. it's it's that little in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you know they mention it when um, where he's getting either trained or whatever that female teaches him how to like, you know, uh, oh, right, catch the, the bullets and all that stuff. Yeah. So they, she shows him what the material. Yeah, is. and then he she's explaining like, oh, you know, this could be like dangerous, dangerous so, or whatever. But that's as much as you get as far as. Information. Information about World War the III. The future. Yeah. I was so excited to learn about what's happening in the future that they didn't give us a lot to work with. Because apparently, uh, in the trailers, if you've seen them, there's things going backwards. There's things like that looks like they are using the force to pull or push. Essentially, they explain it uh, like this. There are two dimensions. There's ours and then there's, a, there's the reverse, right? They both go across each other. Uh, in a, and they're both happening at the same time and they're able to travel between both worlds by the end of the movie like they have a machine that's powered by something that they call the algorithm right um, which they they deliberately leave ambiguous it looks like a giant key right by the end of it it's like this giant puzzle piece yeah it looks like a giant key anyways so she uh, John David Washington is introduced to the tenant organization which can only be accessed through word of mouth. Like, literally, you have to know someone who knows what they're talking about. And they had this really cool saying, right? There's like, what was it, how does it go? If you want to Google it, Grinch, it's like, uh, there is no twilight. And then there's like, because like if you were, if you're a special agent. Oh, it was like, field, um, it was pretty much a, a code phrase. A code phrase, like They right. would say that it would, it would, you know, signify that. You are with the yeah. team. I really, I can't remember how it went. It was like, oh, um, there is no twilight. And then the answer was like, uh, there is no dawn without friends or some shit. I don't know. It was really cool because like they used it a bunch of times. Oh, no. Yeah, that was their, there was their code yeah. they used between it. Like uh, in World War II, there'd be like uh, American troops would be like thunder. And then the response would be flash. And then, you know, you got friendlies. Yeah. Have you seen Brothers in Arms? Sorry to tangent off. That's fine. Brothers in Arms? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No, it's on H. Is it a miniseries? Yeah. It's like HBO or. Showtime. I've seen it like on like my, you know, the. Uh, Mm -hmm. Different options you have, but yeah. I haven't actually seen it. No, it's funny, yeah, because I know that call sign, the thunder, lightning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, so they have a call sign, a call, a phrase to identify each other, and um, the movie moves really fast. Oh yeah. yeah, that was my my issue with it in the beginning was that the scenes were going way too quickly, and mm -hmm. it almost seems like they didn't tie together. Mm -hmm at all um so i was confused for a lot of it um, to be fair that that is a lot of his movies yeah um which going into that film i was ready to be confused yeah absolutely. i didn't have an issue with that that was like i was like yeah that's you know you got to watch it a couple times to to pick up on certain things mm -hmm. but i just at least some most of the movies that i've seen like you can kind of tie together i was just like some of this didn't even need to happen to make the movie flow right yeah right it was weird like it felt like i guess the idea of the movie for nolan was like there's a lot going on around you that you don't realize is happening at the same time that you're doing something because if you realize like special agents right like they live out of sight i just assume that they're like all like batman right like they can just live in the shadows <laughs> like so the idea is that um you know they're doing all this shit in broad daylight and like who was I talking to this about? The idea that there's special agents all around us and we just don't realize that they're saving us from a, a huge calamity, right? Like, I think that's pretty cool. Like, if I was a special agent and I just did shit, like, I'm able to go to a safe house or something and, like, there's, like... You'd be it's found fun to, right away. Yeah. You'd be found right you away. were a special agent. That's, <laughs> it's fun to think about, but a lot of people don't have the right stuff for it, you know? Yeah, yeah it's so, a lot of fun it's, to it's, think about. People it's, have talked about a thankless job, but that's really they would have that's found a real you, thankless job. No right? one they would have found you on they, Tinder. They would have yeah. been trying to hook up. <laughs> oh yeah, my GPS is up. That's funny. I'll bring it up later. The Tinder thing. Um, yeah. So I yeah I have to agree. I didn't like the part where, I mean I get it that the guy who's in charge of World War Three, who happens to own the machine or like has the power to force a foresight. I wouldn't say he owns World War III. I think he's trying to start World no, War III. No, 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 my bad. I didn't mean to say own. 
Right, he's trying to start. Yeah, I don't it. think it's copyright. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> would you say yeah. Hitler owned World War II <laughs> yeah. or um, the Soviets? The idea the that his girlfriend is, um, you know, kind of like his cornerstone of his life. He wants to, you know, the, live. wait, which girlfriend? The wife. The wife. Oh, okay. right, it's his wife. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They were married. Yeah, they yeah. were married. Now, she. What's her name? So oh, yeah, if you, if you, you want the character them? name or the, uh, the female, right. whichever is easier to pronounce. Yeah. Her last name is something. I uh, <laughs> I don't want to like mess her name up too much, but uh, <coughs> Elizabeth Debinky, I think is. Yeah, she's like a, a model or something. D e b i i c k i. Yeah, like the movie divul- diverges to him like being so adamant about saving her, other Which than saving the world. Yeah, because there wasn't enough. Back, background like, or like build up to why he cares so much about saving her maybe there was some kind of undertone message or something like to the say the undertone message is he's an imperfect agent yeah you can't right? have you is. can't yeah, get like these feelings the, the, yeah. whole, uh, the whole humanity which thing, makes right? him compromise she, she suppo- yeah because right? she's supposed to just be his she's she's his link Mission. to uh the oligarchs yes so oh shit that's that makes sense now at the end when he says mission accomplished if that if the arms dealer that he met with earlier in the movie the one where they bungee jumped that was a really yeah. cool scene where that they bungee sick. jump into yeah. the building they bungee but they jump they bungee jump backwards oh they do bungee so jump instead backwards instead of like basically falling off it was more not less of a bungee it was more like a rappel line but going right. up instead yeah. of down that was pretty cool that was sick yeah they, uh, there's a glimpse of it in the trailer um and the whole thing was pretty dope cuz Pattinson just knows how to fucking pretend to he be. actually was very good in this movie. He did really yeah. great, yeah. Anyway, it gave so me it gave me hope for the Batman. Yeah, right. more hope. Yeah. I was already gonna give it a chance, but after seeing this, I was just like, you know what? All right, I got a little bit more hopeful for the oh, Batman. Oh hell yeah! And that one trailer too. Oh, where yes. he just fucking beats it, the it shit is, out of that one guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the trailer they released for the mm-hmm. new Batman movie. And so when he meets her, I think the idea is that the arms dealer was going to murder the wife to actually. For, to further the World War Three plan, or to further the the plans of the oligarch, because he knew that if his wife was dead, I'm sure she knew somehow. If I maybe I made miss something, the idea that if no one can have her, I mean, if he can't have her, no one can, because he made that very clear. Like, uh, you know, I've never been a controlling kind of person, but like, I don't know, she wasn't even that pretty. I mean, she's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay. I'm Beauty tri- is in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah. <laughs> this, okay, so the the main villain, he's like obsessed over his wife. Like he's just like, if no one can have you, I mean, if I can't have you, no one can. Twice right? in a row, he, he fucked that so up. <laughs> this is so sinisterly. We're gonna get it right. And uh, and towards the end, I kind of lost that sen- that feeling that like something bad was gonna happen. I'm like, oh well, you know, if. If he ends up blowing up the world, that would be a cool ending, right? But it doesn't end like that. It, it kind of comes full circle because he kills the ward, the arms dealer, before she murders the wife. Um, but she doesn't realize, the arms dealer doesn't realize that her husband is dead. Who did she kill? The arms dealer? No, you said she killed somebody? She killed the wife? No, she was going to, right? Which one? The wife of the Russian oh, oligarch. Yeah. But that's her. I'm getting too confused. Uh, no, no, no. The, no, the, the arms, arms dealer, dealer that he goes to see yeah. um, is the Indian woman. You can, yeah. Right, yeah. That's the arms dealer, not not Elizabeth's character. Yeah, not Elizabeth's character. Yeah, and so... No. Because she, the, the arms dealer, was going to kill Elizabeth's character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I thought the Russian dude was the arms dealer. No, he was technically the guy with the machine. Yeah. With the foresight. He right. didn't have... He, he was wasn't like, selling he was the weapons. Main villain of, he was selling information, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? That's the idea, because he could see the future. Yeah, or almost, pre- almost, almost see it. It was more like, yeah, it is kind of like a foresight because it's a playback. Anyways, I know I'm getting confused. It's just, so yeah, I'm getting confused. Yeah. As well. talking about it again. Like I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan's movies, and I think Inception is one of those movies that I've seen many times over, and I still find myself enjoying little parts of it that. I didn't think I'd noticed before. But anyways, yeah, his this movie for me, like I thought was I enjoyed it. Even if there was a little bit of convolution uh, with the information, I love that kind of information. They talk about quantum physics. They talk about space time and the shit that 
you know. Not do they? I don't really talk about quantum physics though. They do, Pattinson said he had a master's in. Quantum. Yeah, but just because he said it for like two seconds, they don't really discuss it. Well, no, in but that's the, that's the beauty about these kinds of movies, right? He could have said he had a master's in economics. Yeah, yeah. I just like that idea that Nolan likes to sprinkle like little bits of information in there, kind of like the like Heath Ledger's Joker, right? The idea that he is an act like he's a former special ops agent, right? What? Heath Ledger's Joker? When did the, when when did this information come what out? What do you mean? Are you not familiar with this? Not to go off on it. I'll bring it up later. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. Hold no, on. I don't want to go off from the review. Anyways, but yeah, Tenant for me. Hard to. Um, I enjoyed it. I love the action scenes. The reverse action where like they're in the, the parallel dimension where everything goes backwards, and they explain to him like if you're jogging, the wind will not be towards you. It'll be towards your back. And everything is kind of reversed. He gets into the car, right, to drive in the reverse world. But like, I wasn't sure like how he's with the. Yeah, that didn't make reverse. a lot of sense because he put he put it in drive and he was still going forward. forward. And if everything was supposed to be backwards, it not that backwards you should put us. it, not yeah. that you should put it in reverse. But if you put it in drive, then you would technically be going backwards. Yeah. To go forward. Right. Yeah. But he kept. He just sort of kept driving forward. Which is weird. I didn't see... What? That part, too, kind of confused me. I was like, so how does it work I mean, when you're in a car? I was, yeah, because like when it was going on, I was thinking about it. I was like, all right, hold on. Maybe they'll be more explained. Or like, they'll get more... It'll get more clear yeah. the more we get into it. But that didn't really seem to happen. I can't wait no. to see the breakdown of the movie. How most, some of it was shot. Because I could see... You know what? One part, too. Uh, when they're going to the vault, right? And mm-hmm. he gets into the fight with um, his future self? Yep. Right, and, he and John David Washington, they're like both fighting, and it looked a little choreographed, right? They're kind of like blocking it's each other. It's all choreographed. Yeah, yeah, no. It's all choreographed. No, but I meant like it looked more like he knew what he was about to throw. Like his punches, I'm like, why does it look so soft? Right, yeah, because they he, have the same training, training, so they know what to what attack to and to defend against. So I thought it was yeah. funny because I was just like, oh shit, like that's a dead giveaway. I'm like, it's either this is a really shitty choreographed film or whatever the physics in his reverse world cause him to be able to like fucking you know move backwards that's what's able for him to like make it look like he's predicting his movements but when we realize that that's him from the past running into him into his older self i thought that was pretty cool when they're just getting down it was like a mirror fight but you can't tell you don't know it's a mirror fight obviously if you're not like paying attention to like the small details i don't know i think if we're i mean i liked it and usually his movies um happy to and more than willing to watch again because mm-hmm. like i didn't get obviously you don't get everything on the first mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. watch but i don't know this one in particular just didn't really resonate with me very well do you much. have any uh, final thoughts on the movie um yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend going and watching it like paying because i take all the cost together you know because not only do you have to pay for the the seat you have to drive but up then, there. Then you know you're driving up well, there. I mean, hold on. To be fair, like we went to a we stuff. went to a theater that was like far as no, no, shit. No, even to if be it fair. was right here, right? Yeah. You still go out of your way to go. I mean, yeah. So it's it's an okay film, just not to go. Like I I would definitely watch it again. Just not. I yeah. wouldn't go and pay to go watch yeah. it. I'll probably yeah, you wouldn't like go out of your way on, that like, much. Netflix or something to watch mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it was it was an okay movie. Um, I knew I was gonna be confused. I do want to watch it again just to see if I can again maybe understand it better mm-hmm. the second time. Uh, it may take me a couple more times. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. I just didn't like the buildup. Like it was in his character, um, uh, John David Washington. Yeah, he, his character wasn't really related like relatable sorry um i didn't i didn't connect with him at all Mm-mm. so it was very hard for the main uh character to not be like i almost didn't we didn't we i connected more with uh robert Patterson, pattinson the, yeah, yeah character than than his so it was just very like i'm just watching this guy if go through the motions. We, we can't not talk about the weapons handling because that was <laughs> embarrassing yeah, you, that you was go, you go ahead what dude, are your final so thoughts on the movie as much as i like um john washington or john david washington if we're using his whole name mm-hmm. um 
throughout the whole movie he shows absolutely no knowledge on like weapon handling at all because literally the all the only confidence he establishes within you as far as like his weapons handling is being able to take out the magazine mm -hmm. and rack the slide rack, yeah yeah that's pretty much or cock the cock the gun you know what i mean no, that has nothing to do with weapons know, handling with you know weapon, what i mean yeah. <laughs> so like but like he does it like at least 10 or 15 times throughout the movie, yeah. but that's all he does. Part and when of what bothered gets me about the weapon stuff is that it had nothing to do with, like, there wasn't anything. any <laughs> other thing that he had to prepare for, like, sharpening his skills. Like, he was sharpening his skills or getting, like, you know, so that the big fight or something would be with all these weapons. Yeah, like, he like was that. working out. He's yeah, like, he was pull ups randomly was through the thing. Bored and them showing that he can, you know, put a magazine in and cock a weapon. That's pretty much like it. Like, 15 times. That's there was a, the only one good part that uh, um, made sense, and I don't even think it was intentional, mm -hmm. was there was one part where he was handing somebody a weapon and he actually did it right because he didn't, like, point the weapon at him. He had the pistol, which he, again, you know, put the magazine in and, and cocked it, and then uh, he, when he handed it to her, or I don't remember who it was, if it was the female or, the, uh, or if it was Pattinson, but he, uh, he pulled the slide back enough to see if there was a round in the chamber. And then he handed it to him. It was to uh, Elizabeth's character. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then when he, so when he hands it to her, he does it the right way. But watching it, it's kind of like that might have been a mistake because of what's been going on so far yeah. with him just boom, ch -ch -ch, boom, ch -ch, like 80 times. And then That's he's funny. just like, oh, here you go. It, it's funny you say that, too, because I agree with you. Like, uh, I'm not an expert on weapons handling, but I know enough to notice the little things because I'm a big fan of John Wick and those kinds of movies, those action movies where... They actually train for months to to learn weapons handling. Mm -hmm. But uh, you see, like, a John Wick movie, it has him using all sorts of weapons. So it's not like he's training just so that they can catch uh, a take of him 15 times putting in a magazine right. and cocking a weapon. Like, he's actually using that, yeah. all these weapons. Yeah, and I like that. I, that's 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 why I, like, why I like John Wick so much. But, yeah, for me... Um, yeah, final thoughts for me. Like, I would watch it again. I would not watch it in... I would like to watch it in theaters again because I'd like the cinematic experience because most of his movies are pretty cinematic. But yeah, like Rick said, I probably... I wouldn't... Re right now, it's like you can stay home, spend way less, drink, get drunk, and just wait for it to come out on demand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me... So our rating, if you want to explain our rating, how we rate movies, if going forward, and shows... Is that yeah. necessary? Yeah, it is. Because okay. people need to... Because, like, some it's people... Gonna be, it's going to be out of five. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's it's going to be what, you know, our highest movie. Where, you know, what we think is, is kind of the best in that. So, it's a, it's a personal rating. We're not going to go off any, like, you know, whatever IMDb or whatever it mm -hmm. says. Um, which, I think last time you mentioned that there was, like, the ratings for this movie already mm -hmm. were... Pretty Not much, dope, but they were like average. They were in line with what we were saying, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we. Yes. Were saying. Yeah. You yeah. and I, me, Rick and this I. Well, yeah. This movie is not for um, top one, though. The lower IQ. Um. So at least for me. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. That was cute. <laughs> um. But for me, it would be um. So slightly above average, I was gonna give it a like three point five. Just to be clear here, we're not going to do like 3.2 or anything like that, right? We're just going to see no, either the number you or the... If you want to stick yeah, straight to stars, do, yeah. it would be three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanna, but you can stick, to, you can stick to decimals if you want. Yeah, because a three would be like average, average mm -hmm. but I, I think it's slightly above yeah. average. It's just right. not... A four. It's, yeah, it's not a good movie for me to go um, right now. Not like... You know, I think like Infinity Wars, um, Endgame, oh, uh, The Dark Knight. Like man. those movies I went repeatedly you know to the to the movie theater and paid money to oh, watch yeah. it again because they were that good okay i would not yeah. do that yeah. with this right. movie for you grinch what do you think out of it one out of five obviously. Hmm. i liked it but it just didn't have that je ne sais quoi <laughs> that usually is associated <laughs> with uh christopher nolan movies okay i think i i give it a I give it a week three. Okay. A week three. Okay. Yeah. That's a good answer. It's a good answer. All right. Um, for me, I out of five, I give it a four. I thought, I thought it was slightly not slightly above average. I thought it was above average, um, because I just happen to be a fan of these kinds of movies, like uh, kind of psychological action thrillers, and 
you know, I'm a bit biased because I am a Nolan fan, and that probably earns him a solid four. Not any less or more, just a solid four. You can't do that, though. You can't be biased. I mean, I like yeah, Christopher like, like, Nolan, say, too, but I'm yeah, being you know, fair. Hard, We're really not hard, a yeah. fan of yeah. his yeah. work. We it's are. Just, yeah, it's just really hard for me to separate that because, like, just knowing a little bit of his background and understanding that he didn't go to film school and all that stuff, and, like, he's... He yeah, did. but he still makes, like, amazing movies. Um, no, but this, sure. one, this one just sort uh, of missed the mark, he I feel like. He wants to get awards based on his... Merit. Yeah, not not really on like look at my backstory and then give me credit. Yeah, because for I went well, here, no, that, you should yeah. like this. Kind of plays yeah. into it, not to get into it, but you know, because he the way he wrote. Some Why don't you want to get into it? That's not the, the whole point. During the movie. Um. Anyways, but yeah, for me, it's a four out of ten. Uh, would watch it again. Uh, if we weren't in the situation we were in, I'd go back to the theaters. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's uh, that, that's for me. Uh, so do you didn't like it that much to go and drive out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um. Let us know in the comments if you agree. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be more in line with me and Grinch than... If you get a chance um, to see it, by the way, actually, because it's not in very many theaters. Like, we had to drive true. 30 yeah. miles out to watch it. But again, that's only in L.A. County. Correct. For sure. <laughs> right, on the East Coast, where things are pretty much yeah. se back to semi-normal, you can probably go you can almost probably anywhere. go and watch it. But in piece of shit, California, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> yeah. But thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.